Welcome. You to didn't the... clap. It's not important. Welcome to the Ape Talks. As always, this is your host, Mr. Ape, and I hope you enjoy the 54th installment of me talking to someone else. Brahim, how does it feel knowing that we were wrong? We were wrong? And what? Remember the documentary, Cowspiracy, we did uh, like a long time ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Like, it's not completely wrong, but it, there's a lot of wrong shit in it. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's just uh, like when when I... Uh, if, I don't know if you remember, but my first criticism was um, that I don't know enough about the topic. And it seems like uh, some serious numbers are, are dropped here. So I need to do my research. I never did my research. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we were wrong. Uh, like, I, I slightly started believing in it. The whole thing, Cowspiracy, is based off a research paper that has one major problem in it where it basically doesn't take into consideration many other factors. Yeah, exactly. So, like, the, that's how, how numbers can be dangerous, you know? Right. When someone says this accounts for 20% or 18% of the uh, uh, global climate change causes, and then uh, it turns out that it's actually only 5%. Uh, right. It's more it's like, dangerous, five, like how 5 to 14%, but it varies between country to country. Whereas in the U.S. it's like almost almost three percent. Yeah, and and the main reason it varies between in other countries it's because in in Africa let's say they uh, they just have livestock there. They right. don't have uh, a lot of transportation tools. They don't have a lot of factories that are producing some other uh, toxic gases or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like where in America most of it is fossil fuel still. And uh, like people, like when they did their first paper that the whole cowspiracy documentary is based on, they just measured the like exhaust fossil fuel levels. They didn't measure how much it cut, like all the things that are wasted and all the chemicals that are released when they build planes and trains and, and airports, airports yeah, and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. So, you know, they, it's very skewed. But uh, one of the biggest arguments they made was water, water consumption. That like one piece of meat like wastes like two like one hamburger patty wastes like two thousand liters of water or something ridiculous. I believe that shit, and I even said it in, the, in that episode. But it turns out like ninety four percent of that is rainwater. Rainwater means it gets recycled. The cows piss it back into the ground, and then the circle you know of the water cycle, whatever they call. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Because usually water uh, that when we talk about recycle, we we think about the water uh, getting evaporated out of the sea uh, during summer, and then uh, it rains in in the winter. You know, that's the cycle. But when when you're consuming this water uh, and making uh, hamburgers out of it, how is, is it gonna be recycled? Well, the cows like piss it back into the ground, and yeah, so okay, like yeah, let's yeah. let's be sure. So Sure, some of them, like, keep it in these big funnels next to, like, the farming land of all the feces and the urine and all that, like, brown water. I'm sure some of that does get evaporated. Yeah, yeah you're right. That makes sense, yeah. But what's really crazy is, like, we were saying how amazing vegans are because uh, they're saving the planet. But turns out, like, avocados and almonds, like, you waste way more water because, <laughs> like, 80, 80, over 80% of the production of almond and water uh, and uh, almonds and like avocados use uh, our water reserves not rainwater so they cost a lot more water yeah yeah almonds like all the shells like we could just throw that away and human beings can't eat it but instead we feed it to cows and we use cow manure to like fertilize all the plants because like i told you like a couple weeks ago like one in 60 people around that number are born with autism like yeah. in the 21st century Whereas in the early 1900s, it's it was around uh, one in 10,000 people. So, and a lot of people estimate that that's because of uh, the use of fertilizers and all these chemical cocktails they keep selling. That you need to buy more and this and that instead of just, you know, using letting the soil heal naturally. But because we were in such a rush to produce more and more plants, uh, most of our uh, like most of our grounds that we used to farm with, we use fertilizers and these mixtures of different chemical cocktails that are very cancerous and harmful, you know, which is pretty crazy. Also to the salmon thing I showed you, which is even scarier, I didn't know salmon is the most toxic uh, food in the world. Yeah, man, it's just, uh, you, you never know, like, uh, in, the, in the currently, uh, how bad something is. Uh, like every day you you uh, uh, discover something new and then it's uh, it's like the the whole world uh, is a lie and uh, your whole life was a lie 
<laughs> right, my whole life was a lie. <laughs> Ramsey, when, when he was eating salmon, he was thinking that it was the healthiest thing uh, he right, can and ever I, eat. I fucking ate so much of it in my life, man. Holy shit. <laughs> and yeah. it's, you know, it was crazy, especially the Norwegian salmon, which is the fanciest shit we think at the supermarket, is the most toxic kind of salmon you, you can eat, which is fucking crazy, man. Like, I... I Eat so many packets of that in my life. Check if, if this video is actually right. Like right, because now, now we have to do a video in like six months from now saying that this is... I don't know. I don't check. I just... I'm too lazy. I just take the documentary's <laughs> word for it. And if I realize like my friend... You know, Ruda was the one who showed me the whole meat thing to be bullshit. Yeah. It wasn't that crazy. It wasn't like 18%. One of the main things is also all the antibiotics we use in the pesticides. That is now like basically infected the entire air that we breathe every time you take a breath you're inhaling some percentage of antibiotics now because of how much we've sprayed all over the world mm -hmm. and oh yeah i remembered one more thing from the documentary from cowspiracy they said like we w there's all this wasted land that we could be farming but instead we use it for cattle but in reality most of that land that we use for cattle is because we can't grow anything else on that land <laughs> it's either too steep too rocky whatever yeah yeah like, like it's always the fertile uh, land it's always prioritized for farming right right yeah. exactly and the soil maybe not in the best condition it's so many c different complicated factors in yeah. order to know if it's good to plant on or not another thing is we save so much food that we would throw away by feeding to the cows which reminds me of the salmon uh, why, why is salmon the most toxic fish in the world? They spray the shit out of it with chemicals in Norway, in these little farms. They, they infest it. And they even show yeah, you how they... That's crazy. Like, there, there's no uh, uh, rules in Norway for for, uh, for farming fish or, or... I don't fucking know. I would expect... Or growing fish. Like, yeah. it's, it's weird, you know, the, the, them being allowed to do this uh, and get away with it. I think it's still pretty accurate because uh, I don't think anything has changed that much in terms of the way we produce fish. And uh, what's really crazy is they also show you... There are these different kinds of fish that are too toxic for human beings to eat. What do they do with those fish? They put them in these meat grinders, these big machines. They turn them into pellets like dog food, like puppy food. And then they feed them to the salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of the chemicals they have to get and the, all that shit, they're, they're eating the most toxic fishes you can eat like <laughs> condensed into little boxes okay, but i still think humans did a, a huge uh, improvement in the uh, food, food safety uh, in the last 10 years or so so th this document needs to be reassessed i guess and this is not an account of all the plastic and the mercury too yeah, yeah fish. that's a different story yeah which is i mean on top of that you also have the yeah. shit bro yeah terrifying man and like there's this really famous uh, fish they use all over europe and uh, it's very popular, it's like, but 95% of the world's source of this kind of fish, it's this wild, white, very plain looking fish. They have to fucking use all these chemicals because otherwise they, they die. So that's why like, they sent these professors from France to go, this one professor to go and assess the pools. And he was like, yeah, I see why you're using all these antibiotics. But he was like, why don't you use this kind of chemical? It's you know less harmful to human beings when they eat it. He's like, sorry, it's too expensive. We can't use it. So we're going to rely on the an antibiotic mixtures, which is terrifying. And that fish is so popular, especially in, in Europe and all over the world, because it's plain and it has no smell. And it's like these white fillet fish. And they're usually really cheap. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the, you feed them to kids in cafeterias all over the world. It's terrifying. And on top of that, in the Baltic Sea, they say the f fish is the, one of the, some of the most toxic in the world. To the, to the point where if you walk into like a, a fish store, like a like a butcher, but for fish, they, if they they see you're pregnant, they'll be like, I don't think it's best if we, if we sell you. You know, we have to by go, by government legal law tell you that we don't recommend you eat this fish if you're pregnant. Mm. <laughs> and then they feed it to the kids when they're three uh, or four years old. And crazy <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, this is stupid. Oh man, just uh. I think uh, you you should just stop thinking about what you're eating and uh, eat whatever. It's crazy because according to the fish documentary, the healthiest thing you can eat in terms of le least affected by chemicals and shit is potatoes, milk, and eggs, <laughs> which is great. I, I mean, I love taking uh, like little cubes of potatoes after I fry them. And then what I do is I dice some red onions and I fry them together, the potatoes and the red onions after giving the potatoes some frying. And then on the side, I make some really good eggs. 
I take some butter, I take some little bit of like uh, cinnamon and uh, nutmeg and then mix that stuff with a bit of salt and uh, batter down the eggs. And then on top of that, what I do is uh, mm, I, I put like these cubes of cream on top of the butter and a little bit of olive oil on the pan and I throw the eggs on top of that. And if I have a few pieces of meat from some leftover barbecue or some chicken, I throw them on there too and then I just fry that shit together. And then I eat that with the potatoes next to it and the, the onions next to it. So I'm eating like the... It's, I don't regret looking into this shit because I feel good about what I'm eating, you know. I'm eating the yeah, healthiest shit. Yeah, but then shit. Ramsey asked me, how, how much calories is in this sandwich? But he just <laughs> described a dish with uh, 2,000 calories. No. <laughs> really? No. I mean... Like, uh, like three, like, four like, eggs. Yeah, and uh, butter, oil... Uh, a little bit of like, butter. Oh, yeah. okay. So this much. Yeah, it depends on the portion. A few drops yeah. of oil. But, okay, okay. And the cu- the cream cubes I use is like two f- two, 25 calories a cube. And I use like one... Egg, like if I use three eggs, I'll use three cubes, so seventy-five calories. Okay, okay. It's not ridiculous, bro. Okay. We're still, you see, we're still, we haven't given up. <laughs> for people who are listening, we still are very like uh, calorie obsessed and shit, to unhe- unhealthy level to where it's um, kind of annoying. No, someone w- um, was saying that uh, lebne, which is uh, some some type of yogurt that we do in the Middle East, is is bad uh, because it's all fat, but it's actually ma- made out of milk and it has a lot of protein. And there are versions of it which has zero fat, so it's it's a really good uh, uh, thing to eat for if you want to grow muscle. The zero fat lebne because it has a lot of protein. Who told him not? No, why did you eat this? Like uh, there, there are two Ahmeds, right? Right. Uh, Ahmed uh, number two said this. Sends, uh, said that to Ahmed the uh, Derwish. Oh fuck! Okay, interesting. Yeah. So he was wrong. So you would you you're the most qualified out of all my friends, and would you say in terms of gym and stuff <laughs> and health? I mean, maybe maybe like uh, in terms of calories, because I watched a lot of uh, videos. Maybe in the gym, I'm not sure if me or uh, uh, Rida. I think he's been into powerlifting for at least a year, at least to two. Yeah, when that, that's when I met him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's been a year. <laughs> what do you think of compound lift, like powerlifting, the whole compound stuff where you do everything together? Because, like, that's why people like it, right? It's it's cool. Like uh, th- there are uh, different uh, uh, types of working out. There there is powerlifting and there is uh, weightlifting. The, uh, I don't know what other types there are, but like uh, powerlifting is cool because. Uh, you're, you're not concentrated on uh, building muscles. You just want to uh, high, uh, make your numbers higher. You, uh, you just w- want to break your uh, PRs. So it all depends on what uh, a person wants to do. If he just uh, wants to uh, make new PRs, then go for public. PR? Lifting. What is this? Public Pers- relations? Personal re- record. Oh, okay. Personal record. You have a nickname for that? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's cute. Um, it's well, not mine. <laughs> what are, I'm just going to pretend it's yours. Why do you have to ruin my jokes, man? You make me feel bad about myself. But um, are you still playing simple stuff on Wild Drift, Brahim? Or have you upgraded to more intense shit? Uh, more uh, intense shit. Well, how, well, how would you categorize it as more intense? Why would like, you call it more intense? Yeah, the, uh, because, you know, when you're playing the game, there are uh, champions that are easy to play and there are champions that are like medium and then they are the harder champions so uh, uh, now I'm playing with the, uh, uh, one of the more difficult champions I, Timo is your new favorite one right? <laughs> 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 I mean, I uh, wh- whenever I see a Timo on my team, I just uh, troll pick because uh, I know this match is not worth any effort and uh, yeah, it's wow. just a loss. He's a fucking good champion. I don't know what the fuck you have against Timo. Yeah, like l- last game I had with the Timo was today. Uh, he was 3 10. Okay, you're basing your whole argument off one guy in one game. No, it's not. It's like the average. This like w- <laughs> whenever I see a Timo with with ten one, I I celebrate. You know, the, <laughs> like this uh, this was impressive. But but when I see another champion that with ten one, and yeah, that's uh, that's good, but not impressive. You know, that's what you should do. It's funny. I I don't know why you haven't played like Wild Rift by now. I mean, well, actual League of Legends. You know, if, if like for someone who's gotten into it as much as you have, I would expect you to have like got okay. like a cheap computer at home so, with a usb and like t- so uh, league of legends is is much more complicated right and the match would take uh, double the time of uh, wild drift also the, there are more there are much uh, much more champions so you need to uh, like in wild drift we only have around 60 maybe champions and in league there are 120 i guess so it's gonna take a lot of more time to uh, learn these new champions 
Uh, so to, let's just stay with the 60 enough headache I thought you wanted hardcore <laughs> shit Brahim I thought you were on some hardcore shit uh, yeah and uh, like him and uh, I so don't know some breaking John John bra- breaking Benjamin shit <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know they're my favorite band now really yeah officially the stun yeah. them and Skoon you know Skoon no I'll show you after like okay. the It's these two, uh, Ahmed introduced me to them. It's these two German, uh, two Syrian guys and this one German guy. And they make this like really difficult Arabic music to understand. And I was asking my dad if he could, rec- if he recognized uh, where it's from. And he was like, yeah, it's between the border of Syria and Jordan of this little area where they speak this weird language, uh, this weird dial- dialect of Arabic. Um, so no one from Jordan knows where the fuck they're from. Like, they can't be sure if they're from Syria or Jordan because this little town is right between the center of the border. So most Arabs don't really understand what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> But it sounds really dope. Uh, yeah, this region is, is where the, the people there are so close to each other. Like, uh, you can't actually separate uh, which is uh, which is from Syria and which is from Jordan. Which is? Who is? To, um, <laughs> I thought you were like, talking about witches and witchcraft. <laughs> like, there's witches in Syria? I don't know this shit. <laughs> Like I know we have had these herb healers, just like how many cultures have like these, you know, untraditional herb healers in the Middle East. Long time. Yeah, ago. we had like someone who, uh, like in the history, we had people who do black magic. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no, that that's what's in the history. What do you know about? Like this? even uh, the the Prophet uh, of Islam, Muhammad, uh, w- was once affected by this black magic. Really? Yeah. I don't know this shit. And, uh, <laughs> So uh, th- this magic was was made on uh, a hair of his. It was like tie uh, sewed into something, and uh, and then uh, he, uh, like God told him to go uh, uh, into that uh, well and you uh, water well, and you will find it. Uh, you will find the uh, uh, magic. And uh, they went there. They uh, unwrap it and do whatever they uh, they do. And uh, now he's uh, then he he's okay. I find it weird because God could uh, have just uh, disabled the magic, you know, or not allow it to happen. But uh, I don't know. It, it it makes the story more interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have to add elements. It, it's like I'm watching, you know, Dexter. Have yeah. you seen Dexter? Uh, no. One of my favorite. It used the first couple seasons. Amazing. I just saw a trailer a couple, like today, this morning, after I finished working out. They were do- they're like doing a new season. And of course, you know, his new wife is going to find out he's an ex-serial killer and all that shit. He's basically, Dexter, for people who don't know, and especially for you, Brian. It's about yeah, I know the story, but I didn't watch that. Yeah, a guy who who's addicted to killing, and he so he, he kills bad people. He was like, fuck it, if I have to kill something, I might as well kill bad people. And now he's moved to this new town in the middle of nowhere, and he escaped, hopefully, Miami, where he was getting very close. By the way, the intro to that show is amazing. And you watch him like tie his shoes, this weird, creepy serial killer music, fries his eggs, cut his steak, <laughs> eat breakfast, and leaves his door. That's the intro. I'm addicted to it. I, if I watched it right now and I heard the music, I would start like, you know, when you piss and the hair stands on your neck, like, ah. what's that feeling called? I don't know. I, I get that feeling every time I watch that intro. Like, ah. <laughs> you know, when you walk into like a perfectly AC room. Ah. Yeah, I know. When when you walk into uh, Lily's to go to the bathroom, then uh, you just want to stay there. But what's what's really crazy is what, when you do get used to sleeping without the AC and the heat, you know, if the humidity is not too bad, if it's well balanced, it's manageable. You know, it's just at night, it's going to be a rough, bit rough. But if you have some sort of wind, it's nice. But like the ba- the downside is in Arabic, we, we have this weird obsession with wind. Like, we say the wind hit me. <laughs> If you're sick, oh, the wind hit my stomach. I have stomach pain, the wind hit me. Yeah. Like, oh, put something on your stomach quickly, you're going to get sick. You know, I've I've never, I've been to a lot of cultures. I've I've met a lot of people from all around the world. I've never met a culture that has this, like, thing too, where they think the wind will hit their stomach, where they have to keep their stomach warm. Yeah. You know? It's not only stomach. Like, once I I, I had a severe pain, back, your back pain. Right. Yeah, just because of the fan, I guess. I it's don't fine. know how how this can be uh, uh, happening just to Arabs. <laughs> But it's it's true. It's true. Uh, it's very true, man. I mean, sometimes now now I've learned how to sleep with the AC without getting hurt. You just have to cover everything like a mummy. <laughs> so th- I just leave a very thick... The line I leave around my neck is very thick. 
to protect my neck so it doesn't get too cold and I have this very nice blanket that's not too hot and not too cold and if the electricity cuts it's it's good enough to where it won't make me sweat and so it it, it keeps me well balanced at night and I, I sleep like a mummy you know like the, fa- the Rams, what's his name the pharaoh Ramsey yeah there's a pharaoh named Ramsey so I sleep like him basically in the tomb of my bed I think his name is Ramses right <laughs> fuck it bro it's close <laughs> enough you know you know we, we when we know someone has the same name as us we uh, for some reason we trust them automatically it's psychologically proof <laughs> we tend to trust people so when Ahmed met Ahmed you know what I mean like they must have they have this instant bond and it's, I think it's because of that I don't know you like na- names is just too stupid you know some people say uh, um, you don't look li- uh, li- li- like uh, you don't look like Ibrahim <laughs> like how do Ibrahim looks like you know I mean I know three uh, pretty well and they're all fucking different <laughs> yeah exactly they're so different I know the crazy guy who built this place his name was Ibrahim he was fucking insane I know you and I know the other guy man yeah all of you are very different I don't know how but uh, the name is funny. It rep- what does that represent, Ibrahim? Just uh, the name of an uh, old prophet. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, man... Ramsey means symbolic, right? Symbolic or symbol. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know what, why. It's, like, that's a weird thing to call someone. Symbol. <laughs> you know? I don't think it's symbol. I think it's symbolic. What, like, am I, yeah. what am I supposed to symbolize? <laughs> what was the point of this name? I just like it because it sounds cool. Like, I don't like my name that much. You don't like Brahim? I know it's, it's fine. It's not bad, but it's not uh, the... Uh, it's better than Muhammad. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, my name is Muhammad Brahim. So. Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Really? Yeah. Your full name, oh, man. Uh, or the the man, the worst is Ali. If your name is Ali, oh my God, bro. That would suck, man. Because, I mean, you don't, how are you supposed to feel special <laughs> about yourself? Yeah, talking about the way you see yourself. Um, have you heard of this whole... Uh, What's it called again? OnlyFans stuff. Uh, that they're removing the pornography. And by the way, you know why Asians are different than... Uh, we'll go back to like the whole OnlyFans thing. But you know why Asians are better th- at math than uh, than Americans and Europeans? Why? I, th- I actually found out the real reason. It's pretty funny. It's because they study harder. And on top of that, they believe that they can solve each equation, whereas uh, your Westerners are more skeptical of their ability to solve each equation. And that all goes back to the roots of agriculture. So if you look at what people were farming in Asia versus what people were farming in the West, it's very different and it requires different mindsets. Mm -hmm. So when you're farming rice in Asia, you need to fucking monitor that shit 24 hours a day. 30 like all year round you're working whereas you're farming other shit in europe that's more lax in these hilly grounds where in asia it's these flat grounds you can kind of take a break you know you can take it easy and it goes back to math that's why they're better because they have they're like i have to do this shit and there's no option i have to solve this equation so they become better at math i don't know I, i say it in a way that doesn't sound very smart but i'm saying it i'm like saying it from someone who is very smart yeah, uh, like it makes sense. Uh, maybe it just because like <laughs> Asians, as you said, they they feel like they have to and they can uh, do it. But while in in uh, in the Western uh, schools, they would uh, tell you, okay, you're not good in math, just uh, check where you're good at. You know, so there there is a different attitude in teaching and. Uh, and I don't think I th- I think that's fine. Like even if Asians are better in math, uh, the Western uh, uh, way of of uh, doing it is just telling people find your passion and be good at it. You know. I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm gonna get into the realm of bullshit if I talk anymore. I just wanted to say what I what I knew for sure. But if I want to get into the realm of bullshit, it's possible. For most Asians, the most important thing in their life is to make their parents proud of them, yeah. right? Yeah. But talking about math, we fucking invented it kind of we didn't really invent it we took it from the indians and the romans right and we combined it here like we took the system of one to ten because there if the the traditional way of numbers i'm teaching a mathematician about (laughs) it was we had these roman numerals and like if you wanted to do like 10 times 3 it would be very fucking you know if you got into the hundreds or the thousands with the roman numeral system way too fucking complicated so they took the indian system i think they were the first 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 people who invented a lot of shit and a lot of people took their the shit they invented and 
you know, developed it and said our culture did it, or but most of the cool, cool shit was invented by India. So anyway, so we took some Arab guy, took the like Indian system for numbers and took the Roman numeral system for numbers and put them together and made like the one, two, the Arabic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and he added zero. Anyway, so because you you can't make like a simple calculation when the thousands and Roman numerals are yeah. too fucking confusing. So what he did was he just combined that shit and like look at the number two, right? If you turn it forty five degrees, it's the two in Arabic, the two in English. You know, the, have you realized that? I can't see it, man. <laughs> man, look, the two is like this, this, right? This, yeah. Yeah, move it like this. It's it's the it's the Arabic t- it's the, it's the English too. You see I mean, the yeah, Western too. There is still. Uh, you sure it's a bit. The line is a bit longer at the like end. Like you remembered me when when you were uh, young and the, uh, the the there are these things that are shared on Facebook that if you flip the Coca Cola can uh, Coca Cola logo you will see like uh, some words in Arabic that says uh, no Kaabe no uh, no Allah. <laughs> really? Like, like, uh, yeah. Like <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like just take it, flip it, and. <laughs> no, but like this is the. the I didn't come up with this one too. This is what like the guy who was explaining this shit that from yeah. the documentary I was watching. Pretty crazy. And we got closest to eye surgery. Did you know that? Yeah. We were the closest. Uh, uh, I think there is a museum with the tools that the guy was using. Right, right. But still, it was crazy and barbaric. But still, I mean, it was like advanced barbarism. Because <laughs> 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 he literally has to. It's like, because yeah. I remember in the documentary, the guy went to a real eye surgeon. He, showed him this and was like I mean yeah it works it, uh, technically it's not too bad compared to other shit but I mean it's still fucking crazy you know <laughs> like literally let's put the stick here raise it stick here but like the idea of like glaucoma they found a kind of solution to that where they basically pierced the eye and let the black liquid come out but in a very barbaric way now, yeah I mean like all of these uh, technology that we have and advancements came off uh uh, something previous, uh, so it's a continuous of uh, achievements throughout the uh, humanity uh, that led into this. And whoever takes the lead, uh, whoever is more uh, powerful, uh, uh, and uh, he's he's the global power, will be the one who, who's uh, uh, achieved the most during that period. Right. That's why we say uh, be- because Arabs were actually the uh, main power in the in the uh, on Earth uh, b- b- back in the time. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, that's why they were inventing these uh, much these uh, inventions and then uh, Europe took uh, over and the inventions came from there and now the US right now America rules the world and that's why they do that's why they're terrified and they're destroying anyone who gets a bit big. They, like, find a way to send something to destroy their entire economy. Like Venezuela, like, the guy said something, like, okay, here you go. A few years later, he has the worst economy in the world, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, that's uh, just uh, how the... Uh, w- whenever you're in power, you try to uh, make everyone else weaker. Yeah, like uh, America and Iran. Like, America destroyed the Middle East just by sending... Like, cha- making Saddam, like, fuck it. Let's make it them all like uh, extremists and put Saddam in place and fuck it. Let's let all this shit unravel. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you know. and, and it's not, um, I don't know if if America is the only uh, global power that did that to people. No, I'm sure every fucking country that was on in like power. when the UK was in power, they did shit like that. When France was in power, when sp- when the Spaniards, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't know if uh, even even the Arabs. I'm sure they've done some fucked up shit. Uh, I I think okay Arabs did f- fall down so maybe the US learned from that uh, that you should keep the others in in place uh, I don't know because I think Arabs were actually exporting the, their uh, knowledge outside you know uh, so I don't know actually if uh, if they were doing this or or did the US learned uh, from the mistakes that the Arabs did uh, and now they're implementing it to stay in power longer I I'm I'm really not sure. By the way, do you want to know the secret to never being food poisoned? What? It's very, very complicated. Don't eat anything raw. Don't eat anything raw. Raw. Yeah. That's it. Basically, salads, anything like basic that's not cooked or hot, probably gonna give you food poisoning if you're like going to a new place. Yeah, like if you want to, uh, yeah, makes sense. That's the simple solution. Because you don't ma- uh, know if they actually uh, clean the. Uh, uh, vegetables with uh, really about well, yeah. things that are clean or dirty let's go back to only fans so anyway <laughs> um yeah so i was 
researching prostitution, right, and all the negative effects of working in the industry. And on top of that, a lot of these prostitutes usually have, like, I think the drug use rate is 50% and alcohol use rate is that much. And I don't remember the percentage, but a lot of them suffer with suicide or thoughts of suicide. So they have all these problems. From So then, like, technology comes, internet comes, revolution, right? And we get online sex work to where you don't have to deal with any crazy motherfucker that could stab you, rape you, kill you. Just like the documentary from Lemonio, who's my favorite cha- YouTube channel, he just made a new episode. He takes his time, one one episode of fucking you know, every six months, this guy. He made one about Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper was one of the most famous serial killers in the UK. One of the, some people argue he maybe was one of the first serial killers. And he killed like six, it's estimated it could be six or less uh, prostitutes, all of them. And uh, yeah, no one knows who he is, he escaped. There's a bunch of suspects not enough evidence, whatever, but yeah, Jack the Ripper, only called prostitutes, so like, you know what I mean, when you work as a prostitute, you open yourself up to a lot of danger, but, so we would think in the modern age, online sex work would be, would eradicate all those problems from working, you know, yeah. as a prostitute, you wouldn't, ha- you wouldn't have risk, you wouldn't have alcoholism, you wouldn't have mental issues, you wouldn't have STDs and all that, and it does, working online does remove a lot of those problems, but, Surprisingly, all the mental uh, problems that arrive from what working in this industry are still persist. Pretty crazy, right? I don't know what's the reason behind uh, the uh, that the numbers didn't get uh, eliminated. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is crazy. Well, I think we're talking about the way you see yourself before I went into OnlyFans. And the reason is when you work in this kind of industry, like let's say I'm a cook, you judge me based on the quality of my food. If I'm a mechanic, you judge me based on the quality of me fixing the thing. Yeah. When I work in sex industry, you judge me based on my looks and my performance in sex. So whenever we tend to judge ourselves solely on exterior factors that aren't really in our control, we tend to have low self-esteem by doing so. So I think that's why, just this one thing is why all the mental issues translated from physical sex work to digital sex work. This is my theory. Mm, and I, it's I, good, it could be right, yeah. Today you feel good about yourself or today you feel bad about yourself. And that's only based on the variable of how other people like look at you. I mean, you're putting yourself in a very weak position. Yeah, you have a theory. Th- that might be true. Like another one is you kind of always have to top the other girls. Let's say, like in traditional sex work, it's just your little area. Who's the best prostitute in this area? Oh, I am, or that that chick is, or whatever. But when you're working digitally on OnlyFans, you're competing with billions, or millions, sorry. It's crazy. That's crazy. So you have to top all these other girls, and then these famous celebrity girls are doing it too. So... On top of that, it's extremely competitive. So you have to do crazier and crazier and crazier shit. Mm-hmm. To, and you, and it's not like you're coming up with it's not you're not a mathematician coming up with theories. You're using your body, and you you're exp- it's very vulnerable thing. You're exposing yourself, and you're doing things that are more risky or exposing or could be more embarrassing to you in hopes of competing in this chain. And I think that will have even stronger detrimental effects to the earlier thing we were discussing mm-hmm. which is the way you see yourself and when already when you're doing it, m- more like harder shit to where you mar- are more likely to be self-conscious of you're pushing that shit even higher i mean yeah we, we should just uh, wait and see the uh, new research you know you never know might uh, um, sex uh, online yeah. sex work might be illegal in 2050 uh, but i doubt it but what's really funny is like I said in the beginning, the reason people got into sex work is because they had no other options. That's what used to be there. Yeah. That's, now what completely like baffles me is anyone can te- learn, teach, educate themselves by learning a new language or learning how to code or learning a skill, any kind of fucking skill. You could literally learn it off YouTube. You could learn how to be as good as I am at making meat on the barbecue. You know, like very few people are better than me and I'm very proud to be arrogant about this because I really can't find anyone who's as good as me when it comes to Arabic barbecue. <laughs> anyway, so you could learn any skill and go make money with that. Whether, let's say you learn how to code. 
you could work on Fiverr and like make a little bit of money. I mean, yeah, but now what's different is that you can make much more money on uh, OnlyFans if exactly. you look good. Exactly. You know, so. Right. But what is the long term effect of that? Like people, it's easier. Like most people who work in the sex industry that I've I've met personally. They do it. I, I was like, why, why the fuck do you do this when you could do that? You know, they're like, look, it's easier. I get to get drunk every day. And usually it's young people. They're not thinking of the long term consequences. Yeah. The, mid- the middle aged people I talk to who work in this industry, it's because like I got into it earlier. And it's I mean, like I'm making so much money from my friend who works at 7-Eleven. So it's easier if I just keep doing this is what they tell me. But it's easier said than done when when you're pretty and you can do uh, lots of money, uh, you know, but we people are uh, materialistic and we're uh, instantaneous. Uh, you know, we just need the uh, the money right now. We don't think about the future. Right. I know stories of women, like mothers who work this and their daughter, like someone in the school found out and their children were like kicked out of the school, you know? So... It, it makes things much more difficult, you know? Yeah, but I don't think it's still going to be the case later on, you know? Sure, you could argue <laughs> that people get more open-minded. Yeah. But then the, the next the other thing is, if that's not, people are accepting, but then people won't take you seriously. That'll be the outcome. In a sense, it's going to bring you some disadvantages. And like, let's say I want to find a mate. Not many mates are going to be happy to, you know, marry me. That's fine. You'll find someone at some point. So it's not uh, that... Uh, Bad. Like yeah, I get your point. But it's, my ability uh, to it, it makes your life uh, harder for sure. Long term, it's gonna have so many negative repercussions. Like my ability to find a, and pair bond with another individual is gonna be low, because I've been ran through so many, uh, you know, other people. You know, when I'm fully naked in front of a customer, I kind of it's hard to keep keep my dignity, because it's not about m- me being exposed. Where does this idea of clothes come from? It comes from the cold, you know. You feel protected. The reason we hide our stomachs when we feel nervous or we, we do this with our hands is because I'm protecting myself because I'm uncomfortable from your aggressive eyes, Brahim. <laughs> and I'm prote- you know? So it, it, psychologically, it has so many things. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so I don't think there will be any solution to this. Like well, whoever wants to work in sex work will continue working on sex work. And that's where, that will be their personal choice. Which is unfortunate because, um, I mean... It's not that unfortunate because you can't actually limit people's choices. No, I'm saying, yeah, I'm just saying for them. Yeah. The downsides to it of, like, the image, self-image and self-esteem issues that arise and depression and drug use and alcohol use that are just exaggerated, that are just so high. But do you know, like, many of these problems come from how the society looks at uh, prostitution. I don't think they're inherent in in prostitution, right? Most of the problems you mentioned. I'm sure there's a factor of that. There's definitely a factor to consider in terms of the way society looks at it. But it's more about personal. You know, when you look at yourself, fucks aside, I'm just saying, when you look at yourself and you derive value of yourself based on how other people see you and how other people rate you compared to other people in your industry by something that is out of your control, which is the way you look. Okay. And even people are, people will argue that, oh, in the future, you can completely get perfect plastic surgery without harming yourself or whatever. Then you're just not accepting what you really look like. You know what I mean? Okay, but but still, uh, even in, in any other job, you will be competing with other people. But, and, and you can't actually reach uh, their level because they, they might be just smarter, you know? But you can always get smarter. No. You can control that. No, no, there, there is something called uh, IQ test and, uh, or IQ measurement. I don't like this kind of way to measure someone's intelligence is by IQ. Because, uh, I mean, sure, it's the most accurate method we have right now. To derive intelligence and uh if you want raise the microphone a little bit uh, yeah and uh, sure fine i'll agree but in reality the, there's a lot of things that we don't that, that get missed out and a lot of variables yeah yeah for sure like uh, uh, i'm saying iq for for let's say uh, mathematicians but you know so that's pretty re- relevant sure uh, but you don't i don't think you need the best iq to be the best mathematician no to come up with a very uh, 
the free the free essential theory that yeah 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 i'm just saying I mean? that there will be people that are um, forget about the iq test uh we're just uh, there are people that are just as smarter than other people but you can always be competitive in such an industry because you can always learn new things you can always come up with new ways you don't need to be the fastest person who calculates in math but, but there is still some something that will uh, differentiate these people so even if you put x amount of effort and this guy puts x amount of effort he will be able to discover something that you won't be able to discover that's why there are people who uh, who got uh, uh, these inventions and we, we we still until now amazed by how they uh, invented this stuff uh, because they were just smarter you know there, there is a mathematician uh, called a uh, French math- mathematician called Galois he died uh, at the age of 21 or 22 I guess in, in a duel with his uh, either brother or friend I'm not sure over a girl you know <laughs> I don't know if I told you the story no. before. Yeah, and and this guy like invented ma- many theories and opened a lot of, of uh, gates in front of everyone to uh, to do a lot of research. And this guy died at at the age of twenty one. This guy, if if he uh, stayed alive, and I don't know what how how long they st- used to stay alive, maybe forty forty five. The uh, mathematics degree would be uh, like 10 years long instead of three because I'm sure he would have uh, discovered many, uh, much more, uh, many uh, theories. And that would have been a disaster for (laughs) mathematicians. But uh, so so the, 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 there are people that are just uh, extra special in something and the, they will uh, do uh, much uh, better than other people, even with the same effort they put, you know. So there, there is still an, uh, something to differentiate uh, uh, in every other industry, not only sex work. Like, uh, wh- why is there someone who's who's uh, number one and then there is number two? Do you think that number two is not putting enough effort to be number one? Sure, the person who puts most effort is most likely to be number one. But what my point is, I could be, I could, if I'm 40 years old, I'm not very attractive. I can put as much effort as I want to, but if I don't look good to the customer, I'm not yeah, yeah, look that's, good. Yeah, uh, that's fine later on. But and I'm, in I'm, mathematics, I could be like fucking 60. But if I, I could, and I could not have the best IQ, but if I put so much effort into coming up with something new or combining something different, I could come up with something that could make me competitive. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying about uh, compare, compare it to uh, when, when you're comparing to other people. So, okay, I'm 60, I'm putting a lot of effort. I came up with one paper that was really great, you know. But there, there is some, uh, some other guy who was m- more uh, gifted at math than me. Who did the same effort but came up with two papers instead? You know, so that's how I'm saying. Sure, there there will always be those cases, but yeah. I'm saying you can still be com- you can still be pretty good. Okay, okay, I'm not I'm not talking now about w- what happens after they age uh, the sex workers. You know, that would be uh, the I can't uh, argue with that. But I'm just saying that uh, this out of control factor uh, is just uh, it does happen in every other industry. Sure, sure, but I'm th- my, my main point is it's much bigger in certain other industries compared to other industries. Because you age and that's out of control. That's yeah, what you're I mean, okay. in, in sex, even okay, even in mathematics. My IQ will decline as I get older. My my brain will start to degrade after a certain age, you know, after the age of twenty five. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. my brain will get stupider every year, and uh, yeah, that's out of my hand. But I'm saying uh, people will judge me for differently than the way they judge me in sex work, and maybe that'll change in the future. But whereas in mathematics, I can still come up with really cool stuff, even with a weak theory and uh, a weak mental power and all that. So I can still c- combine my old work and. I could still do something beautiful with that, is my point, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like I told you, most of the people who get into that industry, the sex work industry, they get into it because it's fun. And they're usually young. When we're young, we're fucking stupid. They don't, they're not saving all that money. that They're, they're making a shit ton of it, but they're not saving it, most of them. They're burning it, you know? Because they, 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 they adopt a very high lifestyle that costs. So when they're out in their 30s or whatever, uh, they're kind of broke. Okay. I see. What, what do you think about the uh, pro gaming industry? Let's say um, I didn't have a job and I was playing like six hours a day. Yeah, that's bad. If you're not um, making it as, uh, uh, if you're not practicing to make it a job, then uh, that's bad. You know. Right. So gaming is dangerous because most people aren't gonna. Uh, let's be honest. Ninety-nine percent of gamers aren't looking to go pro. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So what uh, they're and doing. And even is if they want to, they uh, they're not that good. No. If they want to, let them try. I think that's a good thing to try. Maybe if they I fail, mean, yeah, yeah, they will learn something from their experience. And if they fail, maybe they'll learn, they'll appreciate something and they'll go into a new industry. But they should attempt. Maybe they ha- they do have it. But most people 
99% of people aren't even trying to be competitive. They're just having fun, right? Yeah. So the problem with that is they're literally wasting their fucking time. Unless it's a really good game, uh, it's not just some mind-numbing, repetitive, competitive shit that's bullshit. My opinion, like Wild League of Legends. I mean, this is my opinion. I mean, no, people are going to fucking execute me in an hour. <laughs> like, But hey, like in the end of the day, you what are you learning? Okay, sure, you're learning strategy, but up to a certain point. And you'll never be that good because they've created AIs that can destroy you in Dota 2. You know what I mean? So, they, they, I mean, they have an AI bot that like destroyed one of the best teams <laughs> in Dota 2. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I mean, you can't beat a computer. I don't know how Dota 2 works. In in Wild Rift, uh, the AI is so uh, easy. I don't think they uh, no, invested they, a lot of uh, they, money in it. Some competitive team built like a very powerful, insane computer for Dota 2 that destroys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't leave a single... Just, uh, just like how the... Uh, uh, Chess? Yeah. yeah. This was bullshit, you told me? The, what, what, what exactly? Uh, the AI think who be uh, who be, uh, won over the uh, number one. No, it's not bullshit. So around our age when we were born was around the last time a human being was able to beat uh, a chess player, like a human chess player was able to beat a robot. Around the, a year after we were born, or the year we were born, what happened is the same guy. I forget his name. He's a very so it's nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety seven. Around this time, that same guy comes back to play the machine. And basically, how do you beat like a chess AI? Very simple. Chess AIs value pieces. So it's willing to trade if it's in a piece advantage. It's willing to trade if it thinks like, wow, this is going to be more beneficial because I'm, get- I'm getting more points. But in reality, you can easily trick it if you know that basic principle. You, you can give it a big piece, but then you can put it in a very uncomfortable strategic situation to where you can really fuck it up. So he took advantage of this, the, the chess player, the second time he beat the machine to, to try and beat the machine. But when, but he suspects a grandmaster intervened in the AI's decision. Like a grandmaster knew what he was doing and like, no, we're going to make like, <laughs> no, we'll fucking lose. We look stupid. The AI must prevail. And, he, you know, so he, that's what he suspects. And that's but, what he suspects. But uh, we don't know. We don't know that. We don't know. But this is what i meant where it's you, this is what, what i'm what i meant when i told you that story you know but chess is a fucking amazing game you can make like three or four kind of mistakes three mistakes you can make an inaccuracy a blunder or a mistake such a beautiful fucking game man i think i think in terms of intelligence i've recently been getting back into chess and cycle my intelligence maybe it's bullshit cuz at the end of the day they're all games I feel like it makes me smarter than any competitive game I've ever played. And I used to be really into Counter-Strike. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's for sure uh, more mind-stimulating than Wild Drift or, or Counter-Strike or whatever game you want to yeah, play. Yeah, because I feel like when I'm playing, uh, let's say, Wild Rift or League of Legends or Dota 2, I feel like a zombie, just click, 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 click. You're, you're playing just for the thrill of a moment. You right. Know? N- not uh, you're uh, you're just uh, go and try to kill this guy and you know right you succeed or no so it's not just uh, you're not uh, not sitting down trying to predict what the other player is going to do and uh, t- uh, try to think in advance uh, and try to trick them or whatever it's the best way to experience a story if you take my favorite book Shantaram and you turn it into a really good game wow you know I think that'll be the best way to experience that story you know like yeah. Skyrim and all, there's a lot of really good games out there. But it depends on how you use them, you know, like drugs. Some, we need them and depend, you can use them to save someone's life. You can use them to kill someone, you know. Like if you're playing games, you need to have earned the right to be playing those games is my point. Like, yeah, you know? correct. Or otherwise it's just empty satisfaction in life and it's not, you're not going to enjoy that game even. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's true. Like uh, you would enjoy it uh, in the moment, but then you would look one year after and uh, what did you do in that uh, year? You did nothing, you know? Yeah, man. In the end of the day, it's a beautiful world. There's a lot of opportunities for everyone. Uh, you just need to be creative, look at the skills you have, go to where you're valued, or learn a skill that you know no one has in that area and go there. You know, you can you can figure out anything. You don't yeah, have to be. Yeah, that's right. You have a to lot be of opportunities. Th- that's the good uh, side of our world right now. Right. With all of the negative stuffs going on on the side, but this is the bright side of it. Right. You don't have to resort to the oldest profession in the, in the history of human beings. <laughs> in my opinion, you can always do something that 
in the long term even though there's all like a lot of people in for example in South America join you know cartels and they live for like five years some people want to die real quick and live fast and die young you know and okay. live like a king but in my opinion you you change your opinion on that lifestyle very quickly you know some uh, it's it's not going to be as easy as we think so I'm not saying you should always pick the safest option but you should always pick the most strategic long-term benefiting option that's what we do when we play chess yeah, that's a wise thing to say right and that's what we should do when we play the game of life with that being said Mr. Rape signing off <laughs>